Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So for today's video I figured we'd do something fun and time turner our way back into Hogwarts and sort the Star Trek The Next Generation crew into their respective Hogwarts houses. Yep, we're gonna have some fun sorting everyone into their respective Hogwarts houses. It should be a great and fun time stepping back into the wizarding world of the Enterprise? I don't know, that was a bad joke. I'm kind of tired. Let's have some fun. But before we get to that, don't forget to give this channel a subscribe and this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out in the algorithm. Really helps me out in the algorithm. I can say words. It helps me out in the algorithm. Thank you so much for doing that, and let's dive into the sorting. So I already did a video sorting all of the Star Trek captains. So the first one up here, Picard, is going to be a little bit easy for me, and that is Picard is a member of the Ravenclaw house. Like I said, I, I kind of debated putting him in Gryffindor in my initial video because he does have sort of that like bold, like kind of like lion energy behind Picard. They're like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna go in and you know, get people and, and, and yell speeches at them. But as we know, Picard is a voracious reader. He loves to know more knowledge. He loves to talk to people about all these different facts and things. I mean, the dude we learned in Star Trek Picard, he literally like wrote books on history. Like there's no more Ravenclaw-y thing to do than just sit at your vineyard and write books of history. So Star Trek Picard, Picard is quite clearly a Ravenclaw and you can fight me on that. Don't fight me, I'd probably lose, I'm a wuss. All right, next up is the first officer on the Enterprise D, and that is Commander William T. Riker. And of course, this is an easy one as well. Riker is of course a Gryffindor. What else would he be? He's definitely sort of they got that like, take charge, you know, run into danger, much more like bold and, and, and courageous and brave uh, and charismaticness behind him. I mean, there is no character more charismatic in all of Star Trek than Commander Riker. I mean, just look at it. Look at his face. I'm already like, yeah, that dude's amazing. All right, next up is Commander Data. And I debated putting Data into Hufflepuff. I mean, his whole thing is about becoming more human and trying to learn from other humans. And so I could kind of see him being in Hufflepuff for his like, sense of like wanting to be around people and learn from humanity and things like that. And sort of the sense of community that he tries to build. But I think really uh, the obvious answer is that Data is himself a Ravenclaw. I mean, the dude's a living computer. He has all these facts and figures in his head. He's able to like know information instantaneously. So, I mean, it's sort of an easy place Place to put him into Ravenclaw, but I do think you could argue with me that he has some elements of Hufflepuff in him as well. But speaking of Hufflepuffs, we are going to our next choice, and that is Counselor Troy, who, like I basically just teased, it's kind of gave away the uh, gave away the uh, the lead there. But uh, Troy is, of course, a Hufflepuff. I mean, she's all about connecting with others. She's reading emotions and thoughts and Hufflepuffs are all about caring about each other and creating community and and caring about each other's thoughts and feelings I mean that's why I'm a Hufflepuff I am a very very proud Hufflepuff and I love just caring and thinking about other people and other people's needs and that is something that Troy does in spades she's a counselor for freaking sake that that's what counselors do I think all counselors should be considered to be Hufflepuffs so I, I think Troy just perfectly fits in as a Hufflepuff Next up, I'm gonna do someone who was only on the show for one single season, and that is Chief Medical Officer Pulaski. And I think Pulaski is very clearly, 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 clearly a Slytherin. Like, I don't think there's any really debate here. She's very brusque. She's very, like, kind of, uh looks down at other people. She's very cunning as a medical officer, that is definitely for sure. And she's also got kind of a racial purity thing going on there too, when she like constantly looks down at Data saying like, you're an android, you can't possibly be like a living organic being. So it, it, it kind of comes across as a little bit racist, which, you know, like I said, I, I've said before, I have many friends who are Slytherins. My best friend is a Slytherin and I don't think less of people for being Slytherin, but Racism is kind of the purview of Slytherins, unfortunately, and I think Pulaski definitely uh, falls in that category. Also, is it racism or speciesism when it comes to synthetics like data? Is it synthism? Organicism? What's what's the right, like, ism for, for being uh, prejudiced against synthetics? Well, I'm sure someone will figure out at some point. Maybe it already exists as a term. I'm sure it does. But let me know down in the comments if you if you know what that is, because I'm actually kind of curious what, what sort of ism is prejudice against synthetics. But whatever it is, Pulaski is it. Speaking of chief medical officers, though, let's go with the other one on Star Trek, and the one that people really, really love, Beverly Crusher. 
Now, I think Beverly Crusher is a Gryffindor. You could make the debate that she's a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw as well. Like, clearly she knows a lot of stuff about medical knowledge. She did run Starfleet Medical for a very long time. And Hufflepuff, she's a doctor. She loves to care for people. She's very thoughtful towards other people. Uh, so I think you can fit it there. But I really think you could put her mostly in Gryffindor. I don't think there's a more bold and 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 ready to just hop into the fray doctor in all of Star Trek, besides maybe Bashir, than Dr. Crusher. And so I think that that sort of bravery, that sort of willing to step up for what is right, like numerous times throughout the show, she steps up against people who are doing ethics wrong, like medical ethics and things like that, or standing up even to her patients quite often, like she stood up to Worf a couple times when he was being kind of an idiot. Uh, so I, I definitely think you could place Crusher into the Gryffindor category, but that one's the one I'm kind of most iffy on. Speaking of Worf, though, again, this is another fairly obvious and easy choice, and I think that Worf is a Gryffindor. I really don't think you have any other option when it comes to Worf. He's headstrong, he's courageous, he's brave, not exactly the smartest in the bunch. Sometimes he's a bit of a, like, he's basically Starfleet's jo jock, which I, I really think that Gryffindors are like the jocks, like the jock click of Hogwarts, like, yeah, bro, we're Gryffindors, are gonna win, yeah, what up? I mean, I know that's kind of stereotyping, but I've always kind of viewed Gryffindors in that way. And this is, again, I like Harry Potter and I like Ron and Hermione. But I definitely think that they're kind of like that jockey thing. And I think Worf kind of fits slots right into that category. So, Worf, you're a Gryffindor. That's totally okay. We don't think less of you for that. Next up on the list is, again, another easy one. And that is Wesley Crusher. And come on. Wesley Crusher, he's definitely a Ravenclaw. This kid is a know-it-all. That was like the defining feature of him. He just happens to know everything. He just can do everything right. There, He can do nothing wrong. Kind of looks down at people because of all the knowledge that he has. That's definitely Wesley Crusher in a nutshell. And so clearly he's a Ravenclaw. I mean, what else can you say? The kid's a know-it-all. Ravenclaw's a know-it-all. He's perfect. He's perfect there. And finally, the last crew member that I'm going to sort on the Next Generation crew, and that is Jordi LaForge. And this one I think might be the most controversial out of all of them, because I think you could place him into Ravenclaw, because he is an engineer, he knows his stuff. But I'm going to put Jordi LaForge into Slytherin for a couple reasons. One, and I think the most important, is that he is very, very cunning. The dude is constantly, constantly coming up with really surprising and great ways to come up with new engineering ideas on the fly. And I think that that is something that you see in Slytherins, that they're not necessarily always the most intelligent, though I do think Jordy's intelligent, but they're very, very smart and can think outside of the box that most people can't think outside of. That's the thing that I just said. And so I really think that, and I'm saying this is a completely positive thing, I think Jordy fits into Slytherin because he is so cunning. Plus, he also kind of has this, like, creepy, like, lusting after a woman sort of thing, which I feel is, like, a little bit in Slytherin's wheelhouse, like a kind of creepy stalkery thing that he has with Leah Brahms, the hologram. And so I, I, I kind of feel like that weirdly fits into Slytherin. Maybe that's maybe that's a little bit of a negative stereotype. I can kind of see Gryffindors fitting into that too, but I, I feel like that's sort of a Slytherin trait, and so that's a little bit of a negative thing on Jordy. But uh, overall, I think the main reason that Jordy is in Slytherin is a positive reason, and that is his cunning. Oh my gosh, I actually put away my costume and was starting taking down my green screen set and realized that I completely forgot to include Tasha Yar in my Hogwarts sorting. So apologies to Tasha Yar, you are wonderful. I believe I would sort you into a Gryffindor category. You were always very headstrong. You were always, I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm talking directly to Tasha Yar right here, but I think she was very headstrong, very like, like ready to go into battle, ready to fight, ready to stand up for everyone on her crew. And I think that is what Tasha Yar is. I think she's a wonderful, amazing Gryffindor. Uh, yeah, I'm not in my Starfleet uniform anymore, so I guess I better time turner and go back and, and fix this. But uh, yeah, Tasha Yar, you are Gryffindor. But what do you think of all of my choices? Do you agree with my sortings? Do you disagree with my sortings? Would you rather kick me out of Hogwarts and expel me? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to give this channel a subscribe and a thumbs up if you want more fun videos like this or just discussions on politics and social issues through Star Trek and other geek topics. And if you can, it would really mean a lot to me right now considering I just lost my full-time job. If you could consider helping me out over on Patreon, every little bit helps even if you give me a dollar over there. It really helps me directly pay the bills, especially right now during all this craziness going on in the world and the economy right now. But regardless, regard, I can't speak in this video, can I? But regardless of if you subscribe, give a thumbs up, or give to my Patreon, I'm just glad that you stopped by and I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper. Thank you all of you for watching and a special thank you to my patrons, including my amazing commander level and above patrons, Miranda Janelle, Ashley Allen, Eli Berg-Moss, Roman, 
Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum, Stefan Schuhart, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Ish the Mad, Randy Thompson, Mouse Pounder, Wellington Marcus, Lorena Mesa, Alexander Miller, Mari Neckar, Gavin Robinson, Michael Beam, Aaron Brown, Munir Amlani, Maggie Evans, Maeve, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Dante St. James, Wayne Twitchell, Patrick Shannon, Din Hagney, Mystic the Monakeet, Bree Beecher, and Polly Mina. All of your support means so much to me right now, so thank you to all of you. Live long and prosper.